I've just started to paint the hall, the walls to make the inner hall on the first floor and it occurred to me there might be a couple of pointers here for you. First of all, if we look at the paints that I bought this week, this is um, a little sample pot because I'm sure we all use sample pots for these things all the time. This is the Timeless Classics in the Dulux range and it's £3 something, I can't remember the details of it now which is not particularly cheap but it is a very good paint and you can get everything pretty much covered in one coat it's unusual to, to have to do a second coat with this so it, it's one I like and they do very nice colours and if you're doing anything that's a bit vintage a bit Georgian or Victorian or whatever it's it they do have the good colours as well in the range that work well for the for the period the period colours that said I also wanted a um, paint with a slight sheen on it so I had a tester pot made up for me in a particular white that I wanted as well from Valspar. Now Valspar are the ones in B&Q that have those thousands and thousands of colour chip cards and they will also do a colour match so if you had some fabric for instance that you wanted to pick out a particular colour in they, they have a machine that does a colour match for you and you can get a sample pot from them. Annoyingly, I realised when I got home that this pot is over a pound cheaper than this pot and is almost twice the size. So if you're buying Velspar, you're paying a pound less. It was two pounds and something. And you're getting almost twice the amount that you're getting in here. To be honest with you, I haven't used Valspar paints. I have no idea of the quality, though I'm told it's good. So if that's of sufficient quality, personally, that's that's my future in paints because I can get this huge quantity for a couple of pounds. Um, don't panic, it's not that colour. This is a label that's on, on the outside of all their pots. Um, but if I show you the inside, it's not very thrilling. It's just plain white. So... I, have a look at those before you do anything else go to B&Q and have a look at the Valspar range and have a think about that because it's a very cheap way of getting more paint than you'll ever need on a project and in absolutely any colour that you want the other thing I thought that I might share with you which is useful is what I stand things on on, on my work table my work table is fairly scruffy and it's got paint marks on it and stain marks on it and all sorts but I don't want it to get too bad because it's going to get unusable so I try to put things underneath when I'm working and for painting I use one of these really cheap plastic I'm hoping you can see this one of these really cheap plastic chopping boards that you can get pretty much anywhere for not very much go and have a look in um, Aldi type shops I can't think of a, a name of one at the moment but you'll know the sort of pound shop shops and you'll find loads of these around and the reason they're useful they'll clean up quite well so I mean I've been using this one a long long time and it's it's hardly beaten yet and it will move about so if you want to turn your thing around while you're trying to paint it, it's nice and easy it slides around your table that said I have another one here that's absolutely covered in paint which it shouldn't be because strictly speaking this is what I use or should be using and let's turn it over um, for gluing and this is one of those silicone mats again they'll come in all colours and shapes and sizes um, they claim that you can it's a baking liner you can claim that you put them in the oven at any temperature basically and bake on them and nothing sticks and that's the advantage to these for working on for gluing I, I try to keep that for gluing though I'm very naughty and you can see I also paint on it but glue or paint it doesn't matter what you do with that if you stick that in the bottom of the bath and run some warm water on it or a sink if your sink is large enough it will come really nice and clean nice and easily so I've got this cheap stiff one the reason the reason back to that the reason that I'm not painting on that is that it does stick to your work surface it, it sort of clings so you can't move it around when you want to move the object around so again a, a stiff cheap plastic mat for painting so that you can push your object around this one because it will stay in place on your work surface and you can wash all the glue off for gluing 
and the traditional hobby cutting mat for cutting and they are the, the very best things for cutting they do describe them as self-heal as in they won't ever wear out not strictly true but it will last you years and years and years before before you need a second one I only have two because at some stage early on in my career I'd forgotten I got one and bought another one um, but cutting mats are really good they've got marks on them which will help you measure things when you're cutting and to keep your lines straight you can put a metal ruler across the lines as a guide so that's useful and it's exactly the right texture underneath underneath your knife it won't blunt your knife and it will let you cut most materials easily so those are the, the only three mats I actually use and they are three different things for three different purposes basically <laughs>